here we are with Robin Kelson, our garden mentor, <laughs> the, the owner of the Good Seed Company who helped us create our garden last year. And we have many questions for her. We wanted to give you, at our kitchen table, a view of what we're going to talk so about. So here we are in Montana, and rarely do we have no snow on the ground. But we kind March. of have very little snow on the ground. So the question we have for you is, you know, having helped us last year, is there anything we can plant early? Because last year we didn't even have a garden at this At this time. point. It was but Memorial Day before yeah, we had our garden. Yeah, so where do we start this year? So, yes, there's things you can plant now. So what's today? The, 19th, the 20th of 20th, March? 20th yeah. of March. So the, the thing you can plant with confidence are peas. Peas. Okay. Peas. Um, I have a friend who plants on um, St. Patty's Day every year. Wow. wow. Now, okay. do you need to, those are the peas that need the trellises, they right? They need the trellis. But you, yes. So <laughs> okay. you can put the trellis on later. Okay. But it's a really nice thing to do, and I've had friends um, do it even just scraping away the snow. As long as the soil is... Uh, of course, the soil has to not be completely frozen. Got okay. It. The, okay. The question, though, is we have all these leaves on our garden right now because mm -hmm. we kind of set it up at the end of last year. I think leaves and cardboard. What do we do with that? Okay. So you <laughs> don't have leaves on top. I mean, you have leaves on top. They're like a blanket. Okay. You're just going to... We don't have any just cardboard. Gonna, you think the cardboard has been eaten away? Didn't we put cardboard on We did not put cardboard oh, on that was a, <laughs> That was last year. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> see, okay. we don't even remember. <laughs> okay, so what we did is we put we, we put your garden to bed. Oh, okay. So and, tell, and here's what we did. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because we, you may or may not remember, but the whole deal with good soil is what you want to do is feed the microbes in the soil because yes. the microbes are your farmers. You guys are just resource input. Um, We're putting something into there. Your but job really... is just to provide food for the microbes in the okay. soil because that they will then provide food to the plant roots, and then those plant roots will then grow and make all the nutrients that you then um, your body needs when and gets when you eat them. And how we did that was we did use cardboard, right? Or no? no yes, no. originally, oh, originally. Originally. So now we're talking. Okay. But last start. year we cut up all of our veggies. We put them down into some okay, fine. Okay, we're talking about two different things. <laughs> okay. Let's start with. Let's start with um, two years ago. Or two, when or we start. When we started. Yeah. Like first setting up our garden. That's right. So, this so for those of you who had who never started. had a garden, you can start. This with is this. what we did last year. Okay. This is. This is also called lasagna gardening or layered gardening. What you're doing is basically um, stimulating the microbial life in your soil that's already there uh, where you're going to place your garden. And you are smothering the existing grass or things that might likely be growing Weeds there. and things that's like right. that. So what we did is we put down... We put down probably three or four inches of cardboard because cardboard is a great source of um, carbon that the microbes like to eat. It also smothers um, mm -hmm. the life of whatever's growing there that you don't want to grow. And you, we wetted it down, you remember? We, and mm -hmm. then we did that, I think, in the early spring, and some of it we might have yeah. done in the fall before. You could do it in the fall to spring. And then we added layers of leaves, and compost and soil, good quality soil. And um, and that was on top of the cardboard. And the cardboard basically is smothering whatever was growing there before it can't get through. And now you've got a, you've got a good soil layer on top of that that you can grow in. So we put oh, good wonderful. quality soil down first so that we could be growing. Well, you know, though, if I you had done this, if we had done this last a year ago fall, mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. lot of that would have been broken down and made that soil for you, but uh -huh. because we did it in the spring, we added that soil, soil. on soil. top. So okay. it was kind of like the cardboard was a barrier layer. Yeah, it's but now barrier. it's probably all. But we out. didn't actually probably. have compost then. But you brought us. We brought. I brought. Oh, you she brought, brought us. good compost. Oh, okay. Soil. We had this. We had some great soil. soil. Okay. Great, great, Where did you get that? So that soil is uh, or, organic soil from Pico, which uh, Pico, which is a company in um, Big Arm. Montana on the Flathead Lake. So if you're local, get yeah, that soil. It's a great source. Great um, source. We had the best we, soil of all gardens last year. <laughs> <laughs> we think. You know? Super soil. Super soil. soil. Savory soil. Savory soil. And um, I also brought you vermiculture, which is worm castings that I had been yeah. generating. This so is gold. You had liquid gold. Platinum. 
Platinum. Is it platinum? <laughs> now, is there anywhere other than you they can get platinum gold, or is that uh, the... so you? Yeah. So locally, in, so we're in the Flathead, mm -hmm. right? And locally, we have a company called Dirt Rich, which sells um, a high, high, high quality live compost that uh, also includes worm castings in it. Oh. Um, mm. She takes, uh, Alyssa Lachance is the owner of that company. She takes food waste and um, manages the, the composting process in a way that maximizes the life in the, in the compost and the nutrient generation mm. of that, cool. that, that, that huh. breakdown. Yeah, it's high quality. So. And then at the end of last year, though, right. I vaguely recall we right. did cut down all our right. plants and did. So here's so what, what did we do? So <laughs> so again, again, all of that, all of that is to build up the life in the soil uh -huh. because it turns out that it's the life in your soil that the roots of your plants have the relationship with. They're literally the farmers. They are the plant spends uh, sixty percent of the photosynthetic effort of a plant is to generate food for the microbes. Because the microbes are the ones that are making, are finding all the minerals and the secondary metabolites that the plant needs to grow. Like, you know how we need vitamins and we need, we need certain minerals that we get from the plants? They're actually getting it from the microbes. microbes the microbes, ah. that relationship, which is you know hundreds of millions of years in the making. Like, okay. that thing is dialed in tight. We've kind of gotten in the way. Mm -hmm. We can back out and let them do their job. They do it much better than we so can. So that whole lasagna process is designed to stimulate that yep. from for, and yep. we we did that last year. Right. This year, so so okay. Yes. So at the end of your summer, okay, we quote unquote put your garden to bed. But what that was intended to do is um, create a food um, source source for the microbes and the and the other nutrient animals in the in the uh, garden, like the earthworms and whatever, over the course of the winter. And we did so, that by. Do you remember what we did? Well, you yeah. so we chopped up what the the stuff uh, like the uh, sunflowers uh, and, and the, the, chopped them up really small, right. put them on. Yeah, right. and we chopped up some uh, what leaves, else? but we actually ended up putting the leaves up on top. But we put the first layer of those. So basically, pieces. right. So basically, and all of that is intended to provide a, provide a food source for the microbes, the, the, the microbes. microbes, and the okay. earthworms, and everybody else that's in the ground there. So it was ah. the chopping up of the, and that's the micro bridge, and the leaves were just more to keep it. You said it's more. It's more food. Oh, it is oh, more food. Okay. Okay. Some of it. So the ones that we cut that were still kind of alive, that's considered kind of green. Mm -hmm. The leaves were dead. That's considered more carbon based. The green stuff is considered more nitrogen based. It doesn't really matter. And then we we left uh, we left the roots, the, the the plants that had roots. We didn't pull them up by the roots. We cut yeah. them oh. off and we left the roots in the ground because the plants probably they were a lot of them were still alive. Right. And that life relationship is really important because they're still um, feeding, having that inter. Mm. They're not going to grow back from those old roots, but they they'll... might not. They might be. We can check and see how some of the kale did. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not. But but even if they don't, um, most of those roots will be uh, eaten over mm -hmm. the course of the by the micro ah, season. So or no, yeah, probably maybe not the corn stalk so much. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But um, the, a lot of your flowers, mm -hmm. those will probably be gone. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Mm -hmm. So so we could plant. Please, <laughs> but and we're not likely to be the type that do this. But I, what if, what are starts? Okay, and are there things right. we should start? Yeah. Okay. So versus seeds. Two things. Yes. <laughs> I just want you to say. I want you to finish that conversation about the soil. Is oh. what we're doing, is we've been because we provided that food source, they are they are generating compost over this uh. time, and so, the need that you might. The need that often people have of I need to put more inputs more into good my soil, soil or is lessened. Like okay. I would, ah. really, I think all you would need or want is maybe um, uh, a couple bags of that dirt-rich compost I was okay. talking about, yeah, yeah. or something equivalent to that. So not the pico soil that we started with, more the dirt-rich compost. It's just, but just a little bit. That okay. Okay. So you don't yeah. you you're good to go. We've got like, good soil because because you're. 
you're creating the food source so that the inputs are being generated yeah. by the life right. and the soil. You Thank don't you. you don't have to like start over again every year. Right. And that's this is a new important to know. Way good of to know. Yeah. If you're listening, yeah. if don't you, start over. Yeah. If you've got that good soil and you put it to bed well, <laughs> like we and did. Then you're feeding it. And yeah. so the idea of this compost that you're putting down or anything else that you put down in the springtime, it's again, you're just feeding the microbes. Now, we're yeah. going to we could maybe plant the peas, but when will we kind of dig up or do we kind of turn those leaves? When do we actually plant more, like the kale and things like that? So you can be planting kale. So then, so then there are cold season um, seeds, and then there are warm season seeds. And the key about it is the, the temperature in the soil. That's mm. determined, mm -hmm. right? But and we don't put a thermometer in the soil, or do you? You can. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Hmm. You know, you can put your hand in there, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. A speaker in there. Yeah. You know? And so things like peas and what we call brassicas, which are your kale and your broccoli and your cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, all those, those are called cool season. Mm. And um, they can be planted. And they can be planted when the soil is about 40 degrees. Oh. Right? So mm -hmm. yeah, we're 32 couple. degrees is frozen, 40 is mm -hmm. above freezing. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. You should be able to put your finger in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's but usually going to be kind of wet. Mm -hmm. um, but the deal is that it's cool. It's really, really cool. Okay. Then you have mm -hmm. a whole host of other plants. A lot of the plants that we think that are our food plants, they tend to come from um, warmer climates. Like, so what are you thinking? Tomatoes, oh. squashes, they come from warmer climates. Zucchini? Zucchini. Oh, okay. And they need. We do a lot. We had a lot of zucchini. That was one of our ones. But we used. they're warm season crops. Right, right. So we're not going to plant them till so later. So they need you, the soil. That garden soil has to be over sixty. Tomatoes mm -hmm. and other things in the considered the nightshade plants. They're really kind of over seventy. Wow. Right. So that's, that's a July amazing. time frame for us. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, it's cold. It's warm. It's think of the roots. Um, and you th the tomatoes come from the tropics, right? You know? yeah, yeah. And so, so starts are plants that somebody started. Probably Either you start them, or somebody else starts them for you. You buy the plant like this, which means somebody started them indoors, yeah. in an yeah. in an environment that tricks that tomato into thinking, "Oh, it's summertime <laughs> in Mexico." <laughs> right. right? What right. they're doing is not only providing light. But they're also providing soil that's warm, warm so that that plant, that seed, thinks it's time to grow. That's so funny. I never thought of the temperature of the soil as it's a key. key. Yeah. And um, mo this part of Montana in particular, we deal with cool soils. Yeah. And they stay cold long. Yeah. And that's a tricky thing. So it's literally not, a, I mean, part of why we don't plant those tomato starts until after the last frost is because, again, they come from a tropical climate they yeah. can't handle frost at all but also they need warm soil it takes a long time mm -hmm. for that soil to warm up another thing that you're putting that blanket on your with the leaves garden soil does is it helps warm it up oh mm -hmm. so also we don't actually thing take those it. leaves off no okay we they kind of mix them in or no <laughs> we just keep wanting to do some work. It's really hard to realize that all we have to do is put one seed in. I remember that from the last year, too. Yeah, we, we were pouring seeds. lots of seeds in, and that did not work. Yeah, that's a really key point. Yeah, mm -hmm. Don't put too many seeds in. No, no. Yes, that's a true statement. <laughs> and um, it's it's back away from the garden. Let the garden do its Let the garden Step away from the garden. Very hard Seriously. to yeah, yeah, no. to that. But yes, okay. So, so here's actually a, a thing that I really... You know, I don't do it myself, <laughs> but I have friends who do it. My, one of my favorite quotes is, the first thing to plant in the garden is a chair. And the chair is for you. You could go sit. Because mm -hmm. imagine that this is the best thing you could do, is to actually just sit in the garden and mm -hmm. be with it. Wow. It isn't about, you know, wow. getting the weeds out, doing the hard... It's like, yeah. That's like... You know, this might be a good note to end on. Because really, that, that <laughs> is not, your chair. It's not just a lesson for gardeners. That's Maybe <laughs> in life, we would be a lot no, better seriously. off. If and we... this is my point. Yeah. So, remember I told you that there is this relationship between the microbes and the plants that's been going on for hundreds of millions of years, mm -hmm. and they have that dialed in? Yeah. yeah. We are not separate from that. Yeah. Okay? Um, mm -hmm. 
we are related and we are a part of it. And if we actually took the time to sit and be in the garden and be a part of that process mm -hmm. oh, in the non-doing, we, uh, we would engage, we would be actually supporting the growing process, mm -hmm. believe it or not, and you know, just taking this to one more level. <laughs> uh, all the microbes that are in and on our bodies are mm -hmm. relatives of those microbes in the soil. Right. And so we'd be participating in the process seriously just by sitting yeah. and being in the garden. Well, mm. and it is amazing how just even putting hands in the soil, like I think that's why so many people want to engage because it actually feels good yeah. and there's some reciprocal relationship yeah. with our system. So you could put your hands in the soil. Just don't do anything. <laughs> 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 Go so sit in the soil, put your hands, the feet on the ground, oh, your hands yeah. in the soil, yeah. but don't spend a lot of time digging it around and messing, messing it up. Messing it up. Because you're just messing up their house. I got that's it. The right. home. That's wow. your farmer's home, and you're just messing it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, well thank you, Robin. I appreciate it. I appreciate Our it. Our mentor gardener, Robin <laughs> Kelson, Kelson, owner of the Good Seed Company, where you can get heirloom seeds, and they're on her website, so don't keep her too busy, but she's got good seeds. All right. <laughs>